Hello, I'm Gregory Parks, and you are watching ConLink. With me is another one of the originals, Pat Wick. Thank you for joining us, Pat. Well, thank you for having me here. Beautiful. Cool. So, please, uh, or, uh, give us a walk. Uh, what's the story of the part that you played in the creation of the Marvel known as Convergence? The Marvel known as Convergence. Well, in a galaxy far, far away, at least it feels that way now, we uh, decided that we needed to step up and create a convention because we didn't like what was happening to the convention that we were going to and the decisions they were making. So a group of us got together and we started off from anger. And, then we, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we quickly decided that we were going to make our own thing. And one of the, we got together and talked about a lot. We, for the meetings we had for a while, every Sunday night for a year and a half at my house, it's from 6 p.m. till about midnight going over everything we could think of for topics of conversation and policies for the convention. So I remember lots of lots of laughter, lots of crazy rules that were made up and then thrown out the window, a uh, lot of since deciding what was baby and what was bathwater for that whole don't throw the baby out. It's like, well, we, none of us, and the original board had done anything besides show up and volunteer. So we did not have any historical, but that's always been done that way. So we went and got a lot of people who had been working and said, what do you do and why do you do it? To then figure out what was something that we're like, we wanna do this and not do some other things. There was a lot of times we were told, but that's just not the fanish way to do things. And we said, well, why not? Like we're the first people from what I understand to actually put out the budget and how much money we made every year, which was just unheard of. We're like, well, why not? It's a nonprofit, it's information. So there were things that were just different when we came at it in a very different way. Like when we decided how we're gonna handle the guest of honor department, we said, what is the bare minimum we thought guests should have when they come over and only to find out later that our bare minimum is some convention sky high, they'll never get their goals. <laughs> So a lot of a lot of strategy, a lot of research. It was a lot of research, a lot of calming people down, because um, a lot of people were very angry about what was happening to the local large convention and did not like how it was being handled. And we made the decision really early on to say, we're going to be positive. We do not want to hang on the negative. We want to be the positive people and try to make change where it was possible to make the best, most inclusive convention. And I believe we've done a lot of things in the last many, many years, <laughs> coming on two decades, to make it as inclusive as we can. And there were times where we made really good choices and times we made less than good choices. <laughs> Um, but, for example, the things that I'm super excited right now about is our inclusion department yeah. and the various departments of the convention that are working on how they can be more inclusive because we have a department that's inclusive, that's in inclusivity. So, like, outside of ConSuite this last year, we had the... Uh, tape on the ground for arrows for traffic and they also had like stand here versus move here and uh, I found out from somebody in ConSuite the reason they did that was they thought about people with mobility issues needing to go through and said you know what let's make standing areas and walking areas so the reason they did that was thinking about how they could help people who weren't as able-bodied as others which I thought was amazing and they said they did that because of the fact that we're trying to be more inclusive. So, you know, getting guests that I'm, I'm lucky enough to be on the guest search committee and talking about how we're going to have people of different genders, different colors, different ages. We've always worked on trying to get different types of people, so not just authors or not just actors. Yeah. So trying to do even more, and I'm super excited that, for the most part, every time somebody says, hey, well, what about this? we pretty quickly come around to, yeah, let's do that. Cool, cool.
cool. That's a lot. That's a lot. There are a lot going on, which leads <laughs> and, and it, it's it's marvelous. It's nice to hear the the just intent for just like, well, we still want, we want this to be as cool as possible and reach as many people as possible and bring as many people into the table as possible. With all this in mind, yes. what are your thoughts on the growth Convergence has experienced in the last several years? <laughs> growth is such a touchy subject because there's a, there currently doesn't seem to be a idea of what should happen with the growth. Uh, I know we're looking at possibly going to bigger spaces, changing the hotel, um, trying to get more people to be able to fit because the double tree, uh, what I refer to as the radish tree since it went from the Radisson to the Sheraton to the double tree, so it's the <laughs> radish tree building, is limited in size and we've kind of we're getting close to maxing out how many people there can be. Um, I personally am looking forward to continue growing and keeping our belief in let's have all comers come. And if people say it's no longer something I want to do because it's too big, then that's fine. But I don't like cap the idea of getting a cap of too many people and the whole, well, we'll reserve some for specific people. I can't imagine how that will work well with who's doing the reservations of, mm -hmm. like, is it just the old guard, just the new people? Yeah, I just can't figure out a way that that would work well. Um, I think we're gonna come to a level of this is who we are. Are we there yet? I have no idea but rather finding, making allowances for finding it organically and reaching it organically maybe? Yes. Rather than putting constraints or check marks or boxes to check. Absolutely. Um, again, do the best for what we think the convention should strive to be and kind of let it find its own way. If we can get 11,000 people there and it works with 11,000 people and we have the volunteer base, and that's what it stays at, great. If we somehow the convention decides that with enough people, that's 6,600 people, then that's fine too. Cool. So through this whole process, now you've been, you've been, did you take any years off since the beginning or have you been constant the last I can, years plus the first I 15? I can <laughs> honestly say I've been active since day one. The first day when we made the decision that we were going to do this thing, um, we got a phone call from Leslie and uh, she actually called Tim, my husband, and said, we're gonna do it. We got somebody who's come forward with the seed money because that was the biggest things we thought was a challenge was we'd need seed money of a couple thousand dollars and then the address list to try to get to the contact the people who we'd want to come, like the attendees. And Minicon had said that they were willing to give the uh, contact list once, and we just needed the money. Leslie found somebody who said they were going to pony up the money so we could do the starter. And she called Tim and said, we're gonna do this. I've heard, we've talked a lot. I've heard really good things. I want you to become the finance person. And he said, no, <laughs> I'll do something, but you want my wife, not me. Cause <laughs> I don't do money. <laughs> <laughs> she's the money brains. And she's like, oh, well I was gonna ask her to do, and I can't even remember what she was gonna ask me to do. And, and it was one of those, no, you want, me for the money job and Tim more for like the events and other things. So it was interesting that we were going to asked, but it just kind of got flipped on the, yeah, you, what you think you want is not what you're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what started us on the leap forward. And then through the process, we kept getting more people and more people coming in. And by the time the, was it Minicon 33 room party we did there, we, worked really hard. We thought we were gonna just put as much sweat equity as we could get in. We were trying to leave the convention with 50 pre-registrations for the first convention, which would have been a year and like three months later. And we met that goal the first night. Nice. 
because we were thinking if we really pushed hard and we really got going by the convention, we were hoping to have 500 people. We left Minicon 33 with 434 registrations. Wow. So we Ooh. worked really hard. Wow. But that just changed and opened all the doors. But because we got those many pre-registrations, when the person who was going to give us that money said, well, I'm not going to give you the money anymore, we then had the money from the registrations to keep going forward. So the promise of the money that never came is what actually started us to go yes. Beautiful. Kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, it's weird how that works out. <laughs> Uh, last question. I, yes. I oh. forgot to mm -hmm. ask in which capacity, which board capacity you serve now and which former board capacities have you worked? Okay. I was the original person who was on the uh, board of directors as the director of finance. And I did that for the first 11 conventions. I then stepped down and I've not been a board member since, but I have been working on the convention committee since then. I worked for the parties department, which is the people who liaison with the people who throw the room parties and the convention. Yes. And then I uh, was there for two years and then I've been on the main stage crew since. So I work on all of the crazy big dances and events and masquerade and various other things that happen in the main stage space. Beautiful. Um, a actual last thing. We have a few more minutes. Actual, actual. Ah! <laughs> that was a fake out. Um, what would you recommend to people who would like to be involved with Convergence? I would say come on down and say hello. Figure out when the next meeting is. Send something off to the website and say, this is my skills. Who's looking for something? Um, it's like, do you want to work before the convention, at the convention, after the convention? What, are you good with people? Are you good with email? Do you like planning things? Especially if you like planning things, please come forward. We love <laughs> people who can plan things. Beautiful. But if you, but if people just want to stop by at the convention and say, hey, I'd like to help, we also desperately need the people who just show up and help. It takes a lot. It takes it takes a lot of hands to make it work. I think the volunteer department a couple of years ago attempted to find out how many volunteer hours it takes to run a convention like ours. They asked us for while we were at the hotel how many hours everybody did, and we were all like, "Really? I, you uh, want to know?" Turns out I f work fifty-seven hours while the convention's running. Whew. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah, there was it's something like 300 people per hour need to work the convention to, oh. while it's running. Wow. Yeah. So volunteers help. Volunteers are so <laughs> volunteers helped. Volunteers needed. Needed. No. We want you and yes. you and you and you. And you, and you. <laughs> I'll use the direct. Pointing could be rude. We need you. So thank you very much for You're your time, welcome. Pat. Thank you. We'll see you around the convention. Absolutely. And thank you for joining me. This is Conference.